Warning! I don't know how to pronounce the title. And now they just play it. Hello everyone and welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for Fear the Walking Dead Season 2 Episode 6. That was not where my frame was when we started. Um, set, where, where is it? Sick Dis surf, Servers. S service. I'm your host Cleo. Let me have John who's going to tell me how to actually pronounce it. It's just sick at service. Oh. Really? That's it? No. No, I, I was not. You added way too many syllables. I added way too many syllables, as I always do with things I don't know how to pronounce. Um, and, and Dom. We also have Dom. Hi. What's up? Which it almost, it almost is. Yeah, I don't know actually how to pronounce things in Latin. So oh, okay, is it? I, I'm sorry. I thought it was it's Spanish. Not his, no, it's not Spanish. It's Latin. Okay, I'm sorry. I guess because there was a lot of. Spanish. It's in the same neighborhood as Spanish. <laughs> it's in the same neighborhood as like half the languages of the world, but right, you know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Only half. Only half. <laughs> no, not even half. Much less than half. Um, anyway. <laughs> Did we start off I, I freaking loved the opening of this episode. Because it was that? just it was because it was just a group of churchgoers, and it was like, okay, where are we? What goes on? Probably, here? Well, yeah, what's going on? Exactly. That's what I was also thinking. I was like, you know, we're gonna get a, a and, and as as it went on, like, oh, they're all speaking Spanish. You know, they're probably in Mexico. This is probably close to where, you know, the the um, Abigail houses. Blah blah blah. Um, and the way they shot them all taking the, um, communion, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a very good churchgoer. I'm not Jesus. The, the Jesus body of Christ. Christ. Yeah. Um, the way they were, the, they shot them all taking it. I'm like, this is significant. Why is this significant? And then when people started dying, I'm like, that's why it's significant. <laughs> Everybody's dying. Mm-hmm. There was poison in the church. Yeah, they're all bleeding out of their eyes. Yeah. Um, That's that a good was, sign. That was just something that was so freaking interesting to then yeah, later it's... find out that... Um, oh my gosh, what's her name? Mm -hmm. Celia. The, to later find out that Celia was the one, you know, making the uh, the poisoned communion. That she happened to have a couple left over. But just such an occasion. Such an occasion. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. It, poor so Thomas. When they, poor Thomas, I know. They cut to him and I, you see the bite and I'm like, no! Why? Yeah. Thomas. This we whole time. Knew this whole time. Like the, the, the point of the, the last eight episodes yeah you know because where, where did we meet strand episode six or so or yep was it six yeah episode five oh. four how many episodes four was last or season? Five. it was six, six episodes right yeah it so was, it was four, or five. four or five yeah so the last like eight episodes uh the whole point of strand has been to, to get to this point to get to thomas and and yeah it's been strand's goal now it's just like mm. I, I never once, for a second, suspected he was going to be in any kind of danger. No. I didn't I know mean, what to expect. And, and just the way it goes so goddamn deep now, because, like, Celia is, like... 
She's like worse than Herschel was. I was gonna say she's just as bad as Herschel, but Jesus Christ, she's worse. She's well, this whole they're not worse. dead thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, lady, listen. <laughs> because with yeah, because she's got this, and they mentioned it on on the Talking Dead, and and I've got this in my mind now that this is this is it, um, but it's almost like a cult feeling. Yeah. They have around uh, of their view of death. They're um, them fucking live animals, like Jesus. Fuck. Yeah. What is going on here? And they might not know that these things will keep kicking if you feed them or not. Yeah, I'm sure they. They don't might know not that. know. I'm she sure thinks it's the next stage of the afterlife, you know. Yeah. They've she just thinks moved this on. Next. You know, the the this is they've walked among us this whole time. Only the only difference is now we could see them. Yeah, and the and the way she said the, that and like that whole conversation went, it made me think it made me it made me think, lady, do you think these are angels? Like, or, or demons. Well But she has a, a positive um Oh, well, I guess if she's a devil worshiper, then a demon would be fine for her. Well, there's right? two, but, like, I, I'm not, I don't want to get into the line of, of demons and angels in, in terms of this regard, but uh, Cinco de Mayo, the, keep that yeah. in mind, is a is, is Spanish holiday, uh, and where they honor the dead. And she could be looking at it in terms of that. Yeah, like this, right, right. I mean, and that makes some sense. But, I mean, I think, I mean, I don't know about you guys, I was tipped off as soon as she said, like, as soon as she found out that Thomas, oh, not Thomas, um, Luis, Luis wasn't shot in the head. He wasn't shot said, in the head, was he? Then he's no, it's no fine. One. It's all and right. She, yeah, she said, they'll come back to me. I was like, what the fuck do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean by that, madam? Yeah. No, that was that was the tip off for me. I'm like, you're a little cray cray. A little a more little? than Herschel. A little, a little bit. A little? A little bit. A little bit. Um, because I think in, in her case... At least had him locked up where, like, you couldn't get there. Like, people knew they were in there, but they weren't harming anyone. They were, like... Yeah. They were s sealed. Whereas, yes, they're behind bars. They're in almost, like, a prison down there. But there's a little kid in the cellar with them where Talking if he just mother. got a couple feet closer, he's done. Bye-bye. And I think that, that that's that's where... Like she's clearly different than Herschel because Herschel saw the saw them as st still being very very dangerous, mm -hmm. right? Um, but he also saw them as moving around and you know being alive. Um, but where she's he like they were they're sick. they're back they're still yeah no exactly Herschel thought they were sick this she thinks uh, uh, Celia thinks that that they're just they're still people. They're still people. Right. They're just a little different. I mean, they yeah. are people. Not really. They're like... And I mean, just just the thought of, um, of Strand going through with that and having the two of them just be stumbling zombies made me really sad. I'm like, why would you want that existence or anyone you loved? Because she doesn't see it as a bad thing. She sees I know. it as just... And, and, like, when she even told Nick, or not Nick, I think she was... I don't know who she was talking to, where she said, like, you killed them. Was she talking to... Was she talking to Nick about that? Um... I don't remember who she was talking to. Because I remember, like, when she, in reference to the people I think she the was church, talking to Daniel. Daniel. It might have been Daniel. Because she said, he's like, you killed them. She goes, no, you did. It's like, well, yeah. well hold on. No. Back up here, a, a, a tick lady. I feel like we need to bring Shane here to Mexico to just, you know, give his <laughs> talk on the subject again. I think that would be very helpful. They and that are dead! Yeah, and that's... That's something that that came to my mind, like when you saw the cellar, because uh, I was like, oh, "Daniel's just gonna go Shane on these zombies, and you're, you know, Celia's gonna wake up one day, and they're all just gonna be dead in her Oops. basement." Oops. <laughs> and she's gonna have a gun trained on her, and it's gonna be over. Now, in in uh, terms of when this is taking place, like how far in are we? Do we, do we know yet? A month. We're still only a month into the. And, and yeah, at what point did I, Rick I can't wake up? A month. <laughs> so we're at the so same Rick's point now. Woken up. Yeah. 
Rick's waking up now. Okay, so this this is no longer a prequel. <laughs> no, now it's technically co-occurring. Yeah. In a way. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it couldn't be a prequel forever. Right, no, I get that. No, no, yeah. of course. I mean, um. and, and, and I think the most... <sighs> God, the strangest part about all this is like, you know, she killed those churchgoers because they were going to hurt the zombies. Yeah. You know, like, I, I was just like, that's so sick. Like, what? You, you're saving them. <laughs> like, you're literally going out of your way to save them. And you're killing people to do it. This is some well, sick shit. But she's turning them into zombies, too, which she sees as still people. Um, yeah. So to right. her, she's not really doing anything. Yes. She's taking I mean, them from one stage to the next. Yes. Uh, but yes, yeah, no, definitely sick. Uh-huh. And she's making Speaking of sickness, my other favorite part of this episode, uh, Chris. Chris isn't handling things well at all. <laughs> Someone's experiencing their first psychotic break. He's <laughs> the right age. Chris wants to get all stabby on living people now. Uh huh. So I have a question yeah. for you two. Last yeah. week, when uh, Nick shot a uh, douchebag in the face, we now know that that was not his, it wasn't an accident. He didn't actually think he was going to turn. Right. He would just wanted to fucking do it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Did, did you think that at all? Because I didn't get that impression. I, well, last week I thought he was provoked. Like, you know, Reed was sort of goading him at every point he could. And I thought Reed just said the wrong thing and Chris intentionally shot him. Um, but right. then tried to play it off like he didn't. Right. Uh, I'm not sure we're ever going to know exactly why. Whether Reed said anything at all. Um I don't know if they'll ever show it. I feel like we're just going to get, like, Chris's explanations of it. I just, I had to do it. I don't want to hurt people. Uh, maybe, maybe not. He needs some help. It's so crazy. I don't like it. It's so crazy. I mean, I hope he's not too far gone. Because <laughs> I find Chris fascinating. He was very much manhandling... Alicia. Oh, yeah, that was bad. That was bad. And then snuck into their room and took a knife and was going to hurt them with that knife. Yeah, he was. And he happen. even checked to see if they were awake. Yeah, so he, he was did. planning to hurt them. It wasn't an accident that he was in there. He can quickly go fuck himself. With the knife. With the knife. From the knife. In the think... ass. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, that escalated uh... quickly. I mean, I feel like it's gonna, and I don't know how Travis is gonna handle this. I think it was an interesting conversation him and Maddie had. It was an extremely interesting conversation because they were both right. Yeah, yeah, in a, in a weird way, because Maddie kind of turned back into like you know from like we need to help Nick to I need to keep my daughter safe, and he goes like our daughter, Jesus, like. Yeah. You know, and I've I've seen couples do that all the time when like, you know, they have kids from different marriages or whatever and they, they just right. like grab their kids and run to their corners kind of thing. You know, and and it's it's a really sad and scary place to be as, as like a sort of a a mixed family, I guess you could call it. You know, because they have kids from different spouses and whatnot. So mm -hmm. it's not good. <laughs> it doesn't look no. good for them that that, that that's happening and Travis, the poor guy's pleading for her help. I, I, I mean, why would she want to help like, him? When he was like, our daughter. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, th that's, that's his blood daughter, right? No. No, Alicia's not his blood. Oh, okay. No. No, neither of, neither of Maddie's kids are his. Okay. They okay. don't have Chris, any kids together. No. Chris is his only real biological son. Gotcha. Okay. It, it was just sad to hear him say that. Yeah. That, like, he had to remind her, like, Hello, like I'm part of your family, right? Right? Yeah, it's it's not good. No. And I think that real that struck her. 
but also she's just got this crazy like not not crazy i'm sorry she's just got this need to protect her children right yeah I guess right. so right? yeah and i think I, and i mean she sees it's from chris and i mean she wants I'm sure there's part of her that wants to help Chris. And I mean, I wouldn't saw be, her consoling him. I wouldn't be as shocked uh, if he picked up the knife with just Alicia in the room. But because Maddie was there too, I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Like, really?" So it it shows you how strong seated this is. Yeah. yeah. And the it's fact that he wasn't going to see her. Not just a revenge, you know, because because they had that whole argument, that altercation, and he's like, "I don't want anyone to get hurt," as in like he's threatening her not to say anything. You know, so if Maddie wasn't in the room, we would have a different way of looking at this. We'd be like, you know, it's it's a revenge thing and we'd be able to, you know, place it that way, you know, justify it and still have some doubt whether it was or wasn't because of, of what happened on the previous episode. But because Maddie was in the room too and we still see him pick the knife up, you know, it's just like, okay, there's much more going on here. Right. And, and he- remember, he uh, Chris had the conversation with Travis where Travis basically says, you know, Maddie thinks you're lying. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that's probably why he considered doing it with Maddie in the room, because he also right. has this against Maddie. Um, like this, I'm not crazy, you're all crazy kind of thing. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's interesting and it's terrifying, because it's like, yeah. you know, this is the kind of behavior where you're like, uh, hmm, well, you have to go to an inpatient facility and go away for a while. Those don't exist anymore. No, they don't. And now they're on crazy compound number five. And I, I mean, and it compound was just... Compound number five. Like, it was so brazen that he just, like, walked in the room and was on Maddie's side of the bed. Yeah. You know, well, that's where the knife was. and like Alicia had to scream at him to leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think Travis can deny it anymore either, and I and I feel like the like, and I'm saying this as like a rational professional here. Yeah, that safety is now an issue, and they have to um, remove him from the situation. Like they can't, we can't pretend like it's going to be okay. Like Travis is probably going to want to. Like, you, you have to take him away from everybody because he's a risk to people around him. So, like, there's yes. no, like, we, we're at the point where we're not fucking around anymore, like, in my eyes. Yeah. We're but, at, like, you're in a fucking cell until you figure out your shit, you know yeah. what I mean? Yes, but there's also the problem that Travis wasn't there. Travis didn't see what happened. So now it's Maddie and Alicia's word against Chris's word, and it's who is Travis going to believe when they both tell him opposite things. I don't even know if Chris is going to lie about it for much longer. I, it th- doesn't seem to take in much this to like get him to like go, ha, 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 ha. killing seems like a great idea. Yeah. You know. But I think there's something in this episode that changed in Chris where like now he's 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 lying in a way he hadn't before and the, just like the way he t- speaks is even different. Like his mannerisms are different. Like it's all changed so quickly. I don't doubt. I'm curious how long it's going to take and what it's going to take if it's going to even get to this point when they're going to be like, "You can't be part of this group anymore. We have to exile you." Why don't you stay with Celia? We're gonna we're gonna go. You just yeah, you just stay here. here. You know what? Actually, why you'll say yes. You'll do just fine here. Yeah, why don't you go uh, sit inside the cage over there? Uh huh. Go down to the basement, open the Lots door, and just step. step inside. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. Because, you know, Celia's a good cook, and that's, like, wh- her thing. But then she's also put poison in these, you know, very holy symbols. What's to stop her from putting it in her own food? It's like, clearly she is versed in poison. Mm-hmm. You know, she didn't just put rat poison in those things. She no. It's going to be like she drinking put, the Kool-Aid. What can I say? I mean. Yeah, she she put something that, you know, makes you bleed out of your eyes, you know. I don't know anything about poison. I'm sorry. Uh, it's probably I'm arsenic. I'm just assuming that it's a little more advanced than rat poison. You know. I think it might be arsenic. I don't know. Oh, yeah. So, so, something. Something. But it's just... I, I, there's so much 
that is going wrong right now. So much crazy in this episode. So much crazy. So much crazy. Um, and Nick's listening to her is so it's scaring me even more than any of it. Yeah, I was actually just going to bring that up. That, to me, was a very weird, weird scene. It was, yeah. And I understand why Chris is having those thoughts, but I don't understand why he was so quick to jump into this lady's like, Thank you, rhetoric. You mean Nick? I'm assuming because yes. you said Chris. Okay. I meant Nick. Yeah. I'm sorry. Food. Food. He was hungry. I mean, yeah, food, but I mean. <laughs> Do anything you know. for food at that point. He also had to kill a child zombie, which he hasn't yes. had to do. Yeah. yeah. You know. And that clearly took a lot out of him. Because he almost didn't do it. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. And that's been like the first obstacle in this uh, uh, new world for him, really. Mm. Where everything he's been able to do, you know, and he's done very well. And like, this is the first thing where he's questioned everything. And, you know, we they've nicely set up that he has a soft spot for small children. You know, yeah. we've seen that over and over again, that with little kids, he's very, like, very protective, very, like, loving and, and attentive to them. And, you know, this is obviously a sore spot for him. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, it was, it, I, I, I would agree, it was a little just, uh, you know, jarring to see at first, but um, made sense, at least, to a little bit, where he's just like, I'm, I'm done. I mean, I loved, I loved all the Nick, like, flashbacks from the previous episodes and everything. Just, like, I don't know. I just loved how all of that played out. Yeah, yeah. with, like, the religious symbolism. Yeah. And what yeah, did that yeah. have to do with the owl? Anything? Owls the are very owl. judgy. Wait, what? Owls are very judgy. <laughs> yes, they also represent um, the spirit of the dead or the something of the dead in... in... Um, shit. I, t they said it on the Talking Dead, and I was like, oh. Because the whole time I was like, what is it about owls? Yeah. Um, but that's why, that's also another reason why I think it's a, it's a cult. Because the owl was on the coin that Luis said, give to my mom. Right. So that's kind of why I think it's something that was, uh, that they did before the apocalypse, and now that the dead have come back to life, they're like, oh, there we go. This is what we've been saying all along. Mm. Um, but the owls, ah. is, yeah. The belief that owls are messengers and harbingers of the dark of dark powers. Huh. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's, that's kind so of they're why. So they're yeah, they're associated with death and misfortune, often that's associated kind of with the nighttime other world. So yeah. Because it's it's on the tree above the the shrine. Where you right. pray for the dead, um, and it's also on the coin. So I'm thinking this is a very like this is something that happens in this house. Like everyone's on this same page. This is, this is probably the wrong show, but maybe they're the court of owls. That's what I thought too, because I was sitting there through the whole episode like owls, owls, court of owls. What is it with owls? <laughs> God, they could use some Batman right now. They could. <laughs> Batman will save them. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Joker is technically a zombie, right? Yeah, sure. Depends on what you're reading. <laughs> Depends on which origin story you're going with. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, God. Uh, and, and I, I mean, uh, I don't know, like, I mean, I guess if you saw the previews of the next episode, we kind of see, like, where Nick is going with this. But, like, right now, it's kind of like a very odd place that he's in because... You know, in some points, he's, like, relating to the zombies because, like, he's just very seemingly comfortable blending in with them in right. some cases. And in other cases, he's like, I'm a murder machine. I can kill these things all day, you know. Yeah. So I don't know what this is all going to turn into for him. And, I mean, last season he said uh, something along the lines of this This has been my life. You know, like the apocalypse. He, he's been living in a world like this for a long time. And yeah. it's interesting because... He, he's ready for it and, and everything. Yeah. So, on one hand, he doesn't fit in to this community. You know, mm -hmm. like, this, this isn't 
this is as far away from him being who he is than than what he's been since season one you know and but at the same time point he's still useful there so he's kind of in this awkward position to begin with in in this community Hmm. yeah yeah and and it's even weird like stranger that you know he's been looking for validation for maddie and she hasn't been giving it to him Mm -hmm. so obviously he's gonna look elsewhere for it i mean that that just seems like a natural thing to happen so you know, the fact that he's getting it and that, you know, Celia is as nuts as she is. She is still uh, seemingly an empathic person because she could see by his smile that something was wrong. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't think Maddie even thought to ask him if, any, if he was OK. You know, I don't, I don't think she's even ready to do that right now because she's so tied up with what the hell Chris is doing and what the hell the family's going to do. You know, so she's not he's not getting the attention from her that, she, that he wants either. So. You know, you you do look for comfort in other places, especially if you're in recovery and you're newly sober, you know. Mm -hmm. And having, you know, crises of faith, like having to put an axe in a child's head. Right. And even a couple episodes ago, wondering why he's even here. Yeah. Like existentially or physically both, you know, (laughs) both, uh, you know, that that's that's not a small question to be asking yourself, you know, yeah. by all chance he should be dead, but he's not. So a lot of this does make sense for him to be doing, I guess. Mm-hmm. God, I love Nick. Don't do anything stupid. Yay. Nick. I know. <sighs> Just, I know. And it's like last episode, I could have said the same thing about Chris, but I don't think I could say that anymore. Yeah, I don't like you, Chris. He's turning into a little serial killer. You're a fucking monster. <laughs> Someone's yeah. got to put, put you down, son. Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous about that. I'm down. Um, oh, gosh. I, the, the, like, the whole thing with Strand and, and Thomas was just really, like, it's just really sad. Mm-hmm. It it was yeah, yeah, and even even he was like uh, drawing. He was like, "Oh, that's so Shakespearean of you." <laughs> you now going going with me. Um, and they brought up a question, and and I wonder if we're all on the same page for this on the Talking Dead. It's like, did he, did he? Do that on on like did he what did he plan on actually going through with that plan or did he want um, Thomas to go peacefully so he lied to him? I like, think there was know? part of him that wanted to go through with it. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was kidding. No, I, I think he wanted to do it. Yeah, I definitely think he wanted to do it as well. Oh, that's interesting because I I think I think he. He may have entertained it, but I think he 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 you know set it all up to sort of let Thomas go peacefully, and then. But Thomas didn't want him to. Thomas told him not to. Last we heard, I mean, we can only assume that that he didn't mm-hmm. change his opinion of that fact, or could voice it because he was out cold. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I I don't think we can assume. I, I mean, I don't want to assume that. Because I, I think oh, yeah. that was Strand's... Strand doesn't seem like the kind of guy who would, you know, just say that and not mean it, you know? Yeah, yeah but I think... But I also think that Strand has seen enough of the walkers to, to know that that's not what he wants for the person he loves. Mm-hmm. But that's probably what kept him alive is because he wanted to make sure he put yeah. a bullet at him so he didn't get back up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think you're right. I mean, but those two things can coexist. I think those two ideas That's true. coexist. Yeah. That I would, I don't have a reason to live without him, but at the same time, I don't want to see him turn, and I don't yeah. want to to know that he's turning. And I'm someone else could get hurt or something like that. You know, like who knows what could happen. Yeah, yeah exactly. and and we don't know at this point. Does he know what's going on in the basement? It, it probably at least he's left Thomas's room since no. he got there. Right. He hasn't. Well, uh, if he did know, do you th- do you really think he'd want him down there? No. no. So. Oh no. I like I like with the on the 
you know, those who have died this episode in, in The Talking Dead at the end, you know, they do a little, like, blurb or whatever. And it was like, uh, Victor's last uh, obligation to Thomas was to make sure he didn't end up in the cellar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, God, that was so sad. It's, I can't imagine even being in that position to have to choose like that. It's going to be awful. Yeah, I, I mean, this is the whole reason they got on this goddamn boat. Like, yeah, this was supposed to be it, you know, and it's I don't know. Out. It's not it. I mean, I, I hope Strand, you know, hopefully bounces back and like kind of starts looking around and maybe takes control of the situation a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, if Maddie's job of, of looking over her kids wasn't hard enough, now she's going to have to look over Strand because, you know, Thomas is yeah. like watching after him. She's got a lot on her plate right now. <laughs> yeah. The whole yeah. not getting stabbed thing is a pretty high priority. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's not do that. <laughs> So. Yeah, but I, I I liked, I liked that where Thomas is like, I know you're you're a tough cookie, so make sure he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I'm actually really interested to see where Maddie and and Strand's relationship is gonna go from here. Yeah, they they clearly the two that are the most uh, bonded with you know well, uh, uh, Strand is the most bonded with yes. her I should say. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, You're my best friend. Yeah, it's like the fox <laughs> and the hound, you know. Oh, kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, Not I, so happy of an ending, but um, <laughs> the fox yeah. and the hound didn't have a, a. Well, I mean, the ending, the the middle wasn't very happy of that movie That's anyway. True. So we're we're not at the end end yet. This is when they're puppies and they're just meeting each other. And, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can 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 somebody please go through and edit Maddie and uh, and him to uh, the, the best of friends song from the Fox and the Hound? Somebody do it, please. Do that. Please, please, please. Because <laughs> you're not even aware they're such a lucky pair. Because <laughs> they're the best of friends. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, we never mentioned Daniel. Because... Yeah. I was to bring him the up. The fuck uh, was going on there with that strangling a child thing? Well, it's funny cuz my brain was like, oh, he had to do some really bad shit back in his, you know. Yeah, right. Back in the back in his day before he came to America. It's like maybe he had to strangle a child. But then Jim Gaffigan on the the Talking Dead was like, is he the one strangling the child, or is he the child? That's what I was thinking. Like, is it yeah. him? And what um, was it that shook him so much? Yeah. Because all we know is that, of his past, is that he had to torture and do all this, this stuff so that he wasn't the one being tortured. So it's like, what yeah. happened to him before he had to start doing the torturing? Uh... God, Daniel's just such an interesting character, always, constantly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, really like, in like the him. middle of his his crisis, he's also investigating, like, the zombies in the basement. It's like, it's all happening at once. And, well, like, and Daniel... I, I liked him when he was on the, the boat, sitting on the staircase, like, you know, translating Border Patrol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? That was really interesting to me. And the fact that Border Patrol is even still a thing is really interesting yeah. to me. Well, Seems like, like a pointless endeavor. Well, I feel like it was just because there wasn't, they didn't have anybody else. They didn't run into anyone else. It was just two guys. And I feel like they're just two guys who are trying to extort people. Yeah, that's definitely what it's. They're yeah. like, oh, nice boat. You know, it's almost like they want to. No, they're the asking boat. for gold bricks and money. It's like, yeah. dude, who has that? Who cares? Okay. Well, like I said, people still think, you know, the world's going to bounce back. Yeah. 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 You know, and I'm sure the major cities, you know, like Atlanta and everything where we saw, you know, Rick waking up to, are much worse and much more far gone than some areas like this that are more tucked away, especially on on water. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I also think that if you're like, if you see all this stuff going on around you and you're like trying to survive, 
there comes to a point where you're going to need stuff like food and gas more than money. Like, yeah, um, I don't think anyone's dropping dollars to get gas right now. I agree. Um, I just think they're probably still well stocked up on food, especially if this is only the first month. You know, if things go to shit, you know, and we know things just are, are going to go to shit, chances are we're making it to a convenience store or a stop or something. We're, we're going to get food, right? And whether we have to buy it, whether we have to steal it, you know, whether we have to steal it from other people or rob a house or we're going to get food and we'll have enough food to last us a month. That's, that's not even the thing. Most houses probably have at least a month's worth of food, you know, stocked away if, if they're stocked well enough. Sure. You know? I know my house currently, because I'm never home and nobody in my house is, is ever actually home, there's not a lot of food in there. But when I'm home and, you know, I'm buying groceries and stuff, I could not go to the grocery store sometimes for a month at a time and not be worried. Like, yeah, yeah I'm not going to have I... fruit and meat and stuff like that, but uh, there are boxes of ramen and crap macaroni and cheese that I could cook, you know? I always have 20, I always have 20 cans of tomato soup. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. So, I mean, you'd be able to last a month without worrying. And we don't even know if we're actually a month in at this point. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we may actually only be a week or two in. We don't know for sure. Uh, we, I think we kind of have to be at least a month in. Yeah. Uh, because of the time it took in the camp, set up the camp. The military thing. Yeah, the military it's thing, just... leaving. The, I, I think it's got to be a month. like hit, hitting the month, a month right now. Maybe two. Yeah. But, you know, even still at that point, you're, you're going to assume civilization's going to bounce back. You know, because there's never been something so catastrophic like this before that has torn civilization apart permanently. You know, you get natural disasters that come in and, you know, you get like Katrina or something major like that. I'm sure there are people that are going into, you know, once the, the flood, co you know, comes out and stuff like that, there's people going into houses and scavenging for food and not worrying about did i just rob a convenience store or anything like that you know uh but you know it'll it'll take time for it to grow back and be like yes well nope you can't steal anymore kind of thing you know mm -hmm. so it'll still take a while to bounce back so i think that's where they think they are at this point they it's still gonna bounce back at this point they haven't lost hope yet sure yeah but they're just gonna ride it all out <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> on the crazy Speaking mexican of plantation hope. Speaking of hope, uh, Ophelia, Ophelia one stepped up. She does one touch next spot. She wants that. Um, but she, while her father froze, while they were fighting the, the parishioners, uh, she stabbed a kid in the, in the head. <laughs> right in the fucking head. And the actress is actually very enthusiastic about stabbing a child in the head. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> on the talking dead like it was so funny um but yeah i i like that then that's really the first time we see her do something very like she did it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that was cool mm -hmm. stupid dad stupid dad stab better than you <laughs> I learned it by watching you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I feel like I had something else to say about her before I moved on to her mother. Yeah, but she was went to go pray to her mother. That's when Nick had his little vision quest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> owls. Fucking owls. Owls, yeah. I'm wondering if, like, Celia has some sort of, like, Hypnosis mind trickery. No. I know she doesn't. <laughs> I know she doesn't. Yeah, it's just crazy. the owl. They're, they're going to bring magic crazy. into Fear the Walking yes. Dead. Yes. They have to go to New Orleans next. It's not zombies. It's just fucking necromancy. Mm -hmm. New Orleans. And you know, you know the necromancers in New Orleans. Uh-huh. You know it. Uh... Okay, so we, we figured out how the, the zombie plague started, guys. Yep, Emerald we did Agassi's it. food. What? It's Emerald's, Emerald Agassi's food. <laughs> you know what Bam Emerald is? Agassi. You know what fucking Bam powder actually is? It's a fucking, it's a fucking corpse dust, man. Ugh. 
first region for the zombification process. You don't know. Oh my god. Anyway, next episode is called Shiva. The family faces their biggest test yet. Nick, Madison, Travis, and others try to stay close to each other. And others? So the, and others. The guys from Lost are coming? Yep. The huh. others. The others. They try to stay close. Excuse me. Yeah, and in the in the promo, or well, no, it was the extra scene they showed at uh, during the Talking Dead. But it, Celia is not too happy that Strand shot her adopted son in the head. I wouldn't be either. Not too happy. We are not surprised. I mean, she was originally proud of him, and now she's probably not very proud of him. Oh yeah, no, definitely not. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing um, Maddie stand up for, for Strand. Mm-hmm. She's going to go to bat for him. Yeah. He's going to need that. Well, this was a sad episode. It was. Yeah, it was. I really, it was I really, really liked good. it, though. Yeah, it was, it was excellent. We, we get to see what, what Mexico was all about. You know, this reinforced place. Of course, it's that, not as safe as, as of course. you know. It's typical Walking Dead. Crazy shit's think. going on. And, you know, unfortunately, they didn't have the knowledge, you know, of, of what they did in The Walking Dead. Otherwise, they probably would have cut Thomas's arm off uh, as soon as he got bit. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know? It's unfortunate. <sighs> oh, wow. It's a shame. But... Rest in peace, Thomas. We so hardly well, knew you. <laughs> John, where can the people Literally. find you? Continue you for 10 minutes total. Uh, you can find me at No More No More on Twitter for more than 10 minutes total. <laughs> Dumb. Uh, do 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 do. Phenomenal. <laughs> and you can find me at Cleo Moto on Twitter, Twitch, and Pinterest. And you can find all of us at ASO TV Podcast on Facebook, <coughs> Twitter, Gmail, Google Plus, and right here on YouTube. Follow us for some more podcasts from some of your favorite TV shows, movies, and video games. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye, everybody. We're going to get through this together, I swear. Seek it, sir. John, are you our zombie therapist? I can be. Good.